Some people tap their feet, some people snap their fingers, and some people just sway back and forth. I just sort of do them all together, I guess. And now here is Elvis Presley. I got news for you, baby. I'm so excited. I could just, oh, I can't wait. I think Presley was a star. Well, I heard the news. Oh, he's such a sexy person. He will always be the king no matter what. Dear viewers, Welcome to the Elvis Presley News Report channel yearly review of 2023. This video is a summary with limited information. For more details I refer you to the videos I uploaded in the past year. This video will contain various chapters with the most important Elvis news of the past year. I will also take you on a trip visiting some countries and places. Fasten your seatbelt, enjoy the ride as here we go. The most important Elvis news happened on January 12, 2023. On that date Elvis's only child Lisa Marie Presley died at the age of 54. Lisa Marie was married and divorced four times. With singer and musician Danny Keogh she had daughter Riley and son Benjamin who died by suicide in 2020 at the age of 27. Between 1994 and 96, she was married to singer Michael Jackson and in 2002 there was a short four-month marriage with actor Nicolas Cage. Finally, she married guitarist Michael Lockwood in 2006 but had a very nasty divorce about money issues in 2021. She became the mother of twins in her last marriage. Two girls, Harper and Finley. For a number of years Lisa Marie was a singer, just like her dad. She released three albums in 2003 To Whom It May Concern, in 2005 Now What and in 2012 Storm and Grace. Lisa Marie recorded a number of duets with Elvis. In 2018 they can be heard singing the title track of the Elvis CD Where No One Stands Alone. During the celebration of life at Graceland on August 15, the audience was surprised by a previously unreleased duet by Elvis and Lisa. The very tender version of You'll Never Walk Alone was played during this memorial service. Please check the Elvis Presley News Report of February 2023 for more information about the death of Lisa Marie. The thing that created the most media attention was the release on January 6 of a new remix called Toxic Las Vegas. The remix was made by Australian Jamison Shaw and combines Elvis's 1964 Viva Las Vegas with the 2004 song Toxic by Britney Spears. Only 29 seconds of this mashup that did not appear on the official soundtrack were used in the movie. In 2023 the success of the Elvis movie was recognized and rewarded. Two days before Lisa Marie's death she went with Jerry Schilling to the Golden Globes award ceremony. She sat with Austin Butler when he won a Golden Globe award in the category of Best Actor in a Drama Motion Picture. A month later on February 19 the movie also received four BAFTAs in the United Kingdom. The successes were achieved in the following categories Casting, Makeup and Hair, Costume Design and Best Lead Actor in a Movie. Finally on May 7 Austin Butler won the award for Best International Actor at the 2023 Irish Film and Television Awards for his role in the Elvis movie. There were two controversial events happening in 2023 that stirred a lot of commotion amongst the Elvis fans. The first was the release of the Priscilla movie. The movie is based on Priscilla's 1985 book Elvis and Me and details over the course of the film her life with Elvis from the age of 15 to 27. The Priscilla movie had its world premiere in Italy at the Venice Film Festival. Kaylee Spaney won the Best Actress award at this festival. 
After the release of the movie in the USA, the Variety website published two emails from Lisa Marie that she sent to Sofia Coppola in September 2022. In her emails, Lisa Marie asked Coppola to reconsider her vision for the Elvis character in the movie to spare her family public embarrassment. She wrote the following. My father only comes across as a predator and a manipulative. I read your script and see your shockingly vengeful and contemptuous perspective and I don't understand why. I will be forced to be in a position where I will have to openly say how I feel about the film and go against you, my mother and this film publicly. The budget for the movie was $20 million and it needs at least $40 million at the box office to break even. Three weeks after the release of the movie in the USA, the total amount at the box office was $20 million. At this moment, I'm not sure if the film will be profitable because the majority of the Elvis fans are not going to the cinema to see the film. The second event that led to a commotion among the Elvis fans was the agreement of Riley and Priscilla to avoid a legal battle concerning the ownership of Graceland after Lisa Marie's death. Priscilla questioned Lisa's will because Riley, rather than she, was designated as the new owner of Graceland. On August 4, 2023, a Superior Court judge officially named Riley Keough as the sole trustee of Graceland. From that date on, Priscilla Beaulieu will act as a special advisor to the trust and receive a monthly payment for her role. Apart from a lot of financial benefits, Riley Keough is also allowing Priscilla, to the extent of her authority, to be buried at Graceland after she passes. In the upcoming Elvis Presley News Report of February, I will bring revealing news that will shed a new light on the subject of Priscilla's burial. Yes, I know this is a big teaser, but it will be worthwhile. So check back on January 26, 2024. Sony Pictures Animation slated the premiere of the Agent Elvis series in March of 2023. Ten episodes of the series were shown. But looking at viewing versus costs made Netflix decide that Agent Elvis would not be returning for a second season. Netflix had described the show as offbeat, violent and raunchy and many fans were happy to see that this chapter is now finally closed. After a period of serious health problems, James Burton appeared in good health at the London Palladium on June 4. During the one-night-only event, James Burton and Friends, he was joined on stage by, for instance, Ron Wood of the Rolling Stones and many more surprise acts. A big compliment has to go out to Sir Brian May, who served as Master of Ceremonies. On January 27, the highly anticipated physical edition of the Elvis On Tour box set was released. The box set entered the album physical sales chart in England at number 6 and in the Scottish album chart it entered at number 11. A new feature-length documentary Reinventing Elvis The 68 Comeback about the making of the television special played on more than 800 screens worldwide in the summer of 2023. The theatrical release of Reinventing Elvis came two weeks before the film made its global streaming debut on Paramount+. Reinventing Elvis takes a deeper dive into the making of the comeback special, featuring interviews from some of the surviving performers, but it is Steve Binder who remains the final authority on this particular slice of rock history. The now 90-year-old director shared some new stories from his one-on-one -on -one collaboration with Elvis. It was the NBC network who broadcast the music special Christmas at Graceland. The special aired on November 29, immediately after NBC's Christmas in Rockefeller Center. Released in 2023 is a duet of the song Blue Christmas in the version by country singer Kane Brown and Elvis Presley. 
The Memphis Tourism Board brought a piece of Memphis to Manhattan, Boston and Chicago with the Love Me Tender pop-up bar. This was a two nights only event that made guests feel like they were sitting in the famous jungle room. Director Baz Luhrmann of the successful 2022 Elvis movie teased the Elvis fans with this message. It's true, we have found reels and reels of never before seen footage of Elvis on tour and that's the way it is. Stay tuned. A project involving these tapes will not happen in 2024, but there is still something of interest for the Elvis fans to look forward to. Patience seems to be the key word in this matter. Collector's label Follow That Dream Records released two major box sets in 2023. The first was The Making of Blue Hawaii, a set that contains two hardcover books, four CDs and an EP. The audio content covers the complete Blue Hawaii recording sessions. Just before the end of the year, the second set, titled Elvis Now in Person, came onto the market. This set provides a detailed chronicle of Elvis's career between January and April 1972. This set also contains two books, four CDs and a vinyl EP. Elvis Presley ranks number two on the Forbes list of highest paid dead celebrities in 2023. Elvis's estate generated $110 million in pre-tax earnings. This is the exact same amount as in 2022. Let me take you on a trip around the Elvis world. In October 2023, an Elvis exhibition opened in the United Kingdom at the Arches London Bridge Museum. The exhibition site of a thousand square meters housed over 400 artifacts that were supplied by Graceland. There was also a white glove experience on offer, which included holding Elvis's gold microphone and his famous Las Vegas attendance record belt. A brand new musical titled Elvis A Musical Revolution premiered in Australia. From August till November almost a hundred performances were booked for shows both in Sydney and in Melbourne. Rob Mallet was chosen to play the role of Elvis in the musical. In the autumn of 2023, the Elvis On Screen concert returned to the United Kingdom for seven sold-out concerts. Accompanied by the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, Elvis sang from a big video screen. Here is the top 5 of the highest paid Elvis items at auctions in 2023. At number 5 is an owned and film played Gibson acoustic guitar that was used in Blue Hawaii and GI Blues. Sold for $82,000. At number 4 is a custom made leather and mink coat that was purchased by a collector from the USA for $165,000. At number 3 is the original handwritten working lyric sheet to Heartbreak Hotel, sold for $165,000. And at number 2 is this Walter handgun that Elvis had customized with his name on the right side of the slide and the TCB logo in the wood grip. It sold in 2023 for $185,000. And at number one is this Elvis Presley owned and stage worn iconic lion claw necklace. The amount of pictures that Elvis can be seen wearing this necklace is mind boggling. He wore it throughout his daily life but also lots of time on stage. On December 17 it sold for $375,000. At this time of the year we look back at the ones of the inner circle of Elvis Presley or related people who passed away in 2023. For more information on these people please look back at my previous postings. Lifelong Elvis fan Phil Gellermean founded the fan magazine Elvis World which ran for decades, 75. One of Raquel Welch's first movie appearances was an uncredited role in the 1964 movie Roustabout where she played a college girl. 82. 
Stella Stevens worked on the 1962 movie Girls, Girls, Girls for eight days. She played the role of Robin Gandner, 84. Legendary Vancouver DJ Red Robinson was a rock and roll radio show pioneer and the MC of Elvis's concert in 1957 in Canada. Red Robinson provided the tapes that were used for the 1977 LP The Elvis Tapes. 86. Barbara Gray may be a minor note in the Elvis story, but she was the mysterious girl who was kissed by Elvis and captured on camera by photographer Alfred Wertheimer in 1956. Legendary tenor singer Bill Bays of the Stamps Quartet toured with Elvis from 1971 through to June 1976. It is Bill Bays who sings the fabulous falsetto high note at the end of Burning Love and you can see him in action in the movie Elvis on Tour when he shines in the song Sweet Sweet Spirit. 83. Together with her husband and writing partner Barry Mann, music composer Cynthia Weil wrote two songs that Elvis recorded for his That's The Way It Is album. You've Lost That Loving Feeling and I Just Can't Help Believing. 82. Dixie Locke is regarded as Elvis's first serious girlfriend. They started dating steadily from January 1954 till somewhere in 1956. She said, I cannot actually remember Elvis and I ever specifically breaking up. In 2012, co-written with her daughter Christy, Dixie Locke published her book titled Unlocked – Memoirs of Elvis's First Girlfriend. Dixie Locke died on December 19 at the age of 85. Anita Wood and Elvis dated seriously from 1957 through the army years to 1962. Elvis always referred to her as his number one girl. Elvis's mother Gladys was extremely fond of Anita and hoped Elvis would marry her. Her daughter wrote a book about the years of her mother with Elvis titled Once Upon a Time – Elvis and Anita. Anita Wood was 85. Here are the top geographics of my channel of the past year. Just like every year, Case Mowen, editor of the popular Elvis Day by Day website, has written and compiled with additional contributions from Elvis experts and fans from around the world, his 2023 The Year in Review book. It contains all the news updates on everything that happened in the Elvis world in 2023. The good, the bad and the sad in one complete illustrated full-color reference book. Also added to the content are over 70 in-depth reviews of the main releases, including the new Elvis in Person 1972 book, articles and interviews with some of the bigger names in the Elvis world like Dick Decker and David Ward on their Japanese vinyl book. I just showed you in my video that 2023 was a tumultuous year for Elvis. As a result of that, this sixth volume in the Elvis Day by Day series contains almost 500 pages and is thicker than the previous volumes. The book will be available around mid-January 2024 in both a paperback and a deluxe hardcover edition. You can already pre-order the book via elvisdaybyday.com or poplartunes.com. Thanks for the many views and to the more than 8,900 people who subscribe to my channel. But hey, there's always room for more. I have set a target to get the 10,000th subscriber in 2024 and I need all the help I can get. There were some hiccups in the number of views in the past year and I was reconsidering whether I should continue. I can now officially tell you that the Elvis Presley News Report will continue in 2024 because the views of my videos have risen to the level that I wanted. I will be here to inform you with all the Elvis news that comes available. Goodbye!